Why were the future androids so different from their main timeline counterparts? Does it have something to do with butterfly effect or perhaps something even deeper? Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss that. Now let's begin by talking about the two different timelines that these characters originate from. And despite the fact that they're very similar, there's a lot of differences that occur with them. Whereas in the original timeline and the future Trunks or History of Trunks timeline, Android 17 and 18 were remarkably evil and went around the world wiping out most of humanity, including almost all the Z fighters. In the main timeline, this was quite different, as not only were 17 and 18 more powerful than Trunks' versions, but for whatever for reason, they didn't seem to be as inclined to go on rampages and wipe out everyone in sight. Instead, they seemed more interested in the game of finding Goku. And even when attacked by the other Z fighters, they didn't kill them and instead only worked to incapacitate them and leave them behind. So clearly, despite them being counterparts of one another, these two sets of duos are quite different in terms of their personality and their actions, with the original set being two ultimate villains who totally devastated the Earth and turned it into basically a pile of smoking rubble, and the others being more positive influences and actually helping to save the universe. So naturally, there must be some kind of difference in circumstances that led to these characters being different, because it's unlikely that somehow in the main timeline, 17 and 18 were just born or somehow programmed by Jiro to be even less hostile and willing to commit atrocities. And I think a lot of these differences can really be narrowed down to the circumstances by which 17 and 18 escaped their captivity under Dr. Jiro. Because for those who remember, in the main timeline what happened was that Dr. Jiro as Android 20 and Android 19 attacked the city southwest of South City, wreaking havoc and drawing the Z fighters to them who were warned by Trunks of their arrival. Now this is already something that's different from Trunks' timeline, because originally in his timeline it was 17 and 18 who attacked the city, but for some reason here it was Dr. Jiro and 19. Either way, this eventually led to them fighting against the Z Fighters and being defeated, with Dr. Jiro escaping to his laboratory and waking up 17 and 18 so that they could fight against the Z Fighters, at which point Dr. Jiro was killed by Android 17, and everything that we see in the Cell Saga plays out. However, this situation did not occur in in the original timeline or in Trunks' future. Instead, 17 and 18 somehow escaped on their own, killed Dr. Jiro in the process, and then went to attack the city themselves. Now the timeline of how and when this happened is somewhat up in the air, as after all we know the date in which the androids attacked the city, but we don't really know the circumstances of how they escaped or why they are weaker. And I think a lot of these changes really begin with what Trunks first did when he went back in time, which is not only killing Freeze and his father, but also saving Goku's life by giving him the heart virus medication. Because according to Trunks in his future, Goku actually died of the heart virus a while before the androids attacked the city. And naturally, because Trunks didn't warn them about the androids, the Z fighters were less prepared and weren't actually together as a unit working in order to fight against this threat. Which is probably one of the reasons why Goku caught this virus and died sooner, because he wasn't out in the middle of the mountains training with Gohan and Piccolo, and probably had more exposure with people on Earth, maybe going out into populated areas to visit with Bulma, his other friends, or do a number of other things. Now, a lot of people seem to believe that Goku caught this heart virus on Yardrap, but there's literally no evidence ever given to suggest he did. And rather, it seems more likely that it was rather a virus that was found on Earth and affected a number of other people. Otherwise, why would there have been a vaccine created to treat it, if it was only affecting one person who died years before the virus ever got cured? It's not like we were told that Bulma created the medicine purposely to send it back in time to give to Goku. It just so happened to exist. And I think that Goku's death probably was something that Dr. Jiro would have noticed. Because even though he stopped following the progress of Goku and his strength during the period of time when he went to Namek leading up to when he encountered him in the Cell Saga, considering that much of Jiro's plan revolved around getting revenge upon and killing Goku, all en route to taking over the world, I feel like he probably would have some contingency in place to figure it out if Goku died before that time. And if that is the case, there's the chance that things would have significantly sped up in terms of the timeline of events happening. Because it's likely that without Goku, his biggest enemy there on Earth, in order to threaten him his plans for global domination, Dr. Jiro 
didn't really see the purpose of making 17 and 18 more powerful, or at least as powerful as they were in the main timeline, because no one would really oppose them. He may have also released them prematurely, or tried to experiment with them differently, considering the fact that they were no longer necessary in defeating Goku. And despite the fact that there are anime-only scenes which depict Jiro as an android during this point, it's possible that he may not have even turned himself into an android in this scenario because he didn't really need it anymore, and he wouldn't have the pleasure of killing Goku with his own two hands. Although that part is obviously speculation, it's not like 17 and 18 needed him to be a normal human to kill him either. Either way, one of the biggest differences here would be the fact that 17 and 18 escaped on their own, killing Dr. Jiro as well as Android 19 and possibly even destroying the laboratory in the process, aside from the bunker where Cell was located. With Dr. Jiro dead and 17 and 18 not really having a clear purpose anymore considering that Goku is no longer alive, it's probable that they just went along with what Dr. Jiro's original plans were of going to the city and attacking it to lure out the Z Fighters, which is instantly a far more evil action than anything they did in the main timeline, where they basically just got in one fight and then went on a mission in order to find Goku while stopping and getting into hijinks along the way. In this case, they immediately rushed his city and started wiping out civilians. And then when the Z fighters started to show up, sensing what was going on there, they started to kill them one by one, slaughtering all the most powerful warriors on the planet, leaving only Gohan and the infant trunks alive as being two warriors capable of one day doing something against them. And I think the actions that they committed here really informed and kind of led to their further destruction throughout the course of the story. Because without Goku or any of the other Z fighters to really keep them entertained, they had no real purpose or anything that they could do that could truly entertain them, especially when it comes to them being warriors and looking for a challenge, and so they just went around wantonly destroying cities in order to amuse themselves, something they continued for well over a decade. And along the way, they also encountered Gohan in the adolescent trunks, who it seems pretty clear by all the information we get, they purposely avoided killing and wanted to stretch out their destruction and time fighting him as long as possible, purposely holding back in their fights against them so that they can have a more entertaining challenge. Because if they were to kill Gohan and Trunks, they would have no one really left and they'd be trapped on a world with people who didn't have any powers, who eventually they would just run out of. And they probably wouldn't even have the ability to escape the planet either. The fact that Trunks was still alive at the end of his story after he went to go fight the two androids is pretty much proof of this, and I feel like that is ultimately why the future androids were so different from their main timeline counterparts. Because whereas in the main timeline the androids didn't have to escape on their own, and Goku was still alive so they actually had a real purpose to what they were doing, and were able to enjoy it from that perspective, eventually being shown affection and friendship and being able to become good guys and actually redeemed by helping to save the universe in Dragon Ball Super, in the original timeline and the History of Trunks timeline, this is far from what happened, as their first true action in the story was killing Dr. Jiro and going on a spree of destruction that led to the events of the story that we see. Now as far as the butterfly effect goes, that's obviously a major factor when we're discussing this topic, as after all in a time travel story like this, even the most minute changes in the past can often ripple throughout all the other events in the story, whether they were directly involved or as the reverse flash so eloquently puts in the flashpoint paradox. Break the sound barrier and there's a sonic boom. You broke the time barrier, Flash. Time boom. And it seems like Toriyama also kept this in mind when he was writing Dragon Ball Cell Saga, as Cell's involvement in creating the timeline as well as Future Trunks' involvement through time travel led to a number of minor and big changes throughout the story, including the Z Fighters fighting 1920, as well as the existence of Android 16, who was never even implied to have been in the future timelines. Additionally, we also need to take into account the out-of-universe rationale. As I discussed on my channel in the past, originally Android 1920 were were supposed to be the androids and the main villains of the arc. However, Toriyama changed his mind about this mid-arc and made it 17 and 18, and then eventually changed his mind again and instituted Cell, who naturally kept changing and evolving. So many of these changes really just facilitate that shift in narrative, and can also be explained by them. So I think in this video I've demonstrated why the future androids were so different in Dragon Ball Z. Let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and enable all notifications so you can stay up to date with all of my videos. Thanks for watching and make sure to stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, and you better subscribe.